Assalamu alaikum sisters. Today we're talking about something that many of us women don't really understand. That marriage is not everything. All over we see Muslim women getting married and we start panicking and thinking that our life sucks without a husband. I'm going to tell you why, as a growing Muslim woman, you cannot think like that. And how you can finally find peace in being single. Because that is the foundation you're going to build upon for when your time for marriage finally comes. Inshallah. Let's get into it. Your husband cannot take you to Jannah. On the day when neither wealth nor children will be of any benefit, but only one who comes to Allah with a sound heart. It's important to remember that while marriage is a beautiful part of life in Islam, and it always will be, your ultimate journey to Jannah is deeply personal. No one, not even your husband, can fulfill your obligations to Allah for you. Marriage should complement your path to Allah, not define it. And this concept is no clearer than when we look at the lives of the great women of Islam. Look at Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. When we think about why we look up to her, do we think, ah, yeah, she was the wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him? No. We think about her intelligence, resilience, and devotion to Allah. She wasn't just a wife. She was a scholar, a teacher, and a leader. She had immense knowledge of Islam, narrated countless hadiths, and played a vital role in the preservation and transmission of Islamic knowledge that we're so grateful for today. When she was slandered, it was only her trust in Allah that saved her. And while of course, that type of devotion can only stem when you live with the greatest man on earth, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but it also needs to be you who accepts that. And ladies, it's important to realize this, because no matter how pious your husband is, he cannot fully heal the emptiness inside you. That has to come from you alone. In the Quran, Allah says, Every soul will be held in pledge for its own deeds. In this chapter of your singlehood, really look at how you want to please Allah. That no matter when you get married, certain things in your deen will never change. You'll always read your Quran. You'll always strive for taqwa. You'll always practice being modest. Strive to become the best version of yourself spiritually so that you can walk your journey to Jannah with or without the support of a spouse. You don't have a life and seek by means of what Allah has given you the home of the hereafter. And do not forget your share of the world. Stop feeling like your life hasn't started until you find a spouse. This mindset can limit your potential and undermine the blessings you already have. Now is all you have. And the worst part is that many Muslim women who have this mindset feel regret that they wasted their single years. No one is saying that married life is a trap. It's a beautiful part of life. But your priorities will change. Your time will be divided between your husband, family, and other responsibilities. Right now, you have the flexibility to develop your identity, invest in your career, learn new skills, and strengthen your faith without those added responsibilities. Find your passion and purpose in life so you can always carry it with you. Because otherwise, you'll end up blaming your husband for feeling empty inside, which is something he is not responsible for, and neither are you when it comes to him. I'm not saying something like he had to start a business or an empire, But you need to start building a life that is rich in meaning and purpose. From knowing who you are, what you stand for, and how you can serve Allah with the gifts He has given you. If you're grounded in who you are and what you want out of life, you'll approach marriage with a clearer mind and healthier expectations. Feel fulfilled and joyful right where you are right now. Don't compare yourself to others. Lately, I've seen many women my age getting married, but honestly, I'm not bothered by it. Comparison is a thief of joy. And truthfully, how can I be jealous of other women getting married when I'm not even actively looking right now? Muslim women often don't think about marriage until they see someone else doing it, and suddenly they get hit with a huge wave of FOMO. Fear of missing out can cloud your judgment, pushing you to feel like you're missing out on something you don't even desire at that moment. It's important to recognize this feeling for what it is. A fleeting emotion based on external influences rather than a true reflection of your heart's desires. You may not be in the same place as someone else, and that's perfectly fine. Embrace your current season with gratitude and make the most of it. Allah's timing is perfect, and when you trust that, you can find peace in your current stage of life. Remember, we only see the highlights of other people's lives, not the challenges or struggles that come with them. Don't compare someone's chapter 20 to your chapter 5. Set a pace for yourself. Everyone moves at their own speed in life. Take the time to assess what you want to accomplish. Set personal and spiritual goals and pursue them at a pace that allows you for genuine growth. When you take a step back and evaluate your current space, you might come to a realization that perhaps you aren't simply ready for marriage right now. And that's completely okay. Acknowledging this is empowering. It allows you to focus on developing yourself, nurturing your skills, and deepening your relationship with Allah. So that when the time comes, you'll be ready. Ask yourself questions like, what principles do you want to live by? What kind of lifestyle do you envision for yourself? How do you want to interact with the world around you? Do you have goals you want to achieve in your career before settling down? 
What activities bring you joy? What projects light a fire inside of you? What do you struggle in? And how can you work on improving them for your growth? Because once all of this makes sense to you, you will be able to create an outline of how you want your life to go. And when it comes to thinking about marriage, you know exactly what expectations you're looking for in a spouse, not based on what society or others expect, but based on who you are and the life you envision. You'll be able to seek a spouse who supports your personal and spiritual growth, someone who shares your vision for the future and complements the journey you're on, and you do the same for him, whether you'll be able to serve and obey him as Allah wants you to. The thing is, Muslim women go into marriage without ever considering these things, and they unfortunately end up feeling unfulfilled in ways that cannot always be fixed by their spouse. Remember, you are an individual and he is an individual, and you two are coming together to complement each other, not complete one another. That responsibility is not fair to either of you. Only Allah can complete you. And there you have it, sisters. I hope this video helped you to recognize that your singlehood is a beautiful chapter of your life that you should take advantage of. Your life starts now, and your life will continue on once you get married. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love you guys so much. Nassar alaikum.